In this video you will learn the differences between sets and the arrays inside JavaScript and is it worth it to use sets at all. So how do we typically create arrays inside JavaScript? Here we have an array variable and inside brackets we simply put some values. It can be any values like strings, numbers, objects, everything works. And the most popular usage of array is to store objects inside. Why is that? Because in the typical application we have some entities, like for example users, and then we want to make a collection of these entities, which will be a list. This is why we are using arrays. But starting from ECMAScript 6 we are getting sets. The question is, is it really better than array? Can we use it for our benefit? So in order to create a set we are using new set, and we are providing inside exactly an array. And essentially between set and array there are just two super important differences. First of all inside set all values must be unique, which actually means it doesn't really matter how many times we duplicate numbers here. After we console log here a set, you can see that numbers inside are not duplicated, which actually means the main difference inside simple arrays you can have duplicates, but you can't have duplicates inside set. And the second extremely important point is that array is an index collection, which actually means we have inside indexes and we can access every single value by index. Like for example array 2 and we are getting inside 3, this is the value of the index 2. A set is not an indexed collection, it is a keyed collection with the order of insertion, which actually means every single element that we are inserting inside a set is going on the last place and this is the order that we have. For example here we can write set add and we are providing inside a value, like for example 4. Then inside our set you can see that we are getting values from 1 to 4. But the main difference is that we don't have any indexes, we can't really access any element by the index. We can write here array2, it is working as you can see, but we can't really write here set2, as you can see we are getting here undefined. This is not accessible and this is the main pitfall, because the most benefit that we are getting from the array is exactly working with them by indexes. So what we are getting inside set is just several methods. First of all we have here set has and we can check if we have a value inside our set. We can check for example 4 and we are getting true because we have 4 inside our set. We also are using set add if we want to add a value or we can use set delete if we want to delete a value like for example 1. Now inside our set you can see that 1 was removed. And as I already mentioned our set is iterable, which actually means we can loop here for example with 4 and get access to every single item by using set.values. Now inside here I can write console log and I have access to the item. As you can see in browser here we logged 234 just like normal elements. But the main problem is we don't really want to use for loops inside our code. We have amazing filters, map, reduces which are coming with arrays. With sets we don't get all this stuff at all, which actually means if we want to avoid 4 then we need to convert our set back to array. And in order to do that we can simply console log here an array where inside we want to spread here our set. As you can see in browser we are getting just a normal array which we converted from the set. After this here we can apply everything that we want like for example filter, find or map. But basically it means that we want to work with arrays and not with sets. This is why in the real life I almost never use sets. The only place where I am using sets if I really need to make my array unique. This is extremely easy because we simply take an array like this, we are passing it inside our set and we know that our set is unique now. And when we are spreading it back to the array you can see in browser that it is unique and it doesn't have any duplicates. And actually if you are interested to know how to work efficiently with query parameters without any libraries, make sure to check this video also.